Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Pineapple Podcast. I'm your host, Mitch Parmesan. Today, I just wanted to talk about the pending recession. I want to talk about what's happening with the economy as it relates to our housing, and more so, what do you do as, a, as an investor that has a recession that's approaching? <clears throat> you talk to any of the gurus that are sort of in this real estate space and the economic space, they're all talking about the recession that's going to come. Now, we do know that this is all triggered by government intervention. And the main goal with the government is they want to control inflation. They want to get rid of inflation down because it's literally runaway inflation. So, you know, they, they have had an impact on, on, on the, the inflation rate because we moved from 8.1 or 8.2 and we're down to about 6 point something. So it is having a, an impact in terms of getting that down. Now, how are they getting it down? Obviously, interest rates are going up. So they're not targeting real estate specific. They're targeting the entire economy. Now, the challenge is in a recession, you're going to have a slowdown in the economics of the country. And in this case, it's actually going to be a global situation because the U.S. is in the same boat. Uh, Europe is kind of like in the same boat. So everybody's looking at this and trying to understand, well, how do we curb the inflation? How do we slow down the economy without breaking the economy? Is fingers crossed, my, my hope and pray that they don't do that. But in a recession, it's also a time when you need to plan as an investor or as somebody who's a businessman and you're working on, on what's uh, your goals and what's your business, because you got to be able to ride the recession, right? So what do I mean by that? Well, let's let's look at framing some things in. We know that the recession came about because of the insane spending that governments across the world pushed out during the COVID. Now, one can ask is that, or one can question the fact that they went too broad, too much money without looking at the economy because supply chain was, was dramatically affected from day one because people just could not show up to work things were happening in a negative way. The government wanted to support people at home, so provided money for their rents and for their food and supported companies and business people with extra money so that they don't go under, don't declare bankruptcy and hold the economy together. So that was good in principle. The execution was terrible, as all of you know, in the sense that money was given away to major corporations that treated it as windfall profits. Uh, the government gave small, small scale uh, businesses uh, $40,000 loans in Canada that they only needed to repay back $20,000. <clears> they dropped the interest rate so ridiculously low that people were paying, getting mortgages at 1.4, while their property values were escalating through the roof, which just created access to a lot of uh, capital because people could go increase their line of credit. Uh, get credit against the property and they went on a spending spree and they were buying things that were just really not available because supply chain was affected. So now we come into this year where things are just escalated. Inflation is runaway. Um, overspending is, is happening and now they're going to tighten it up. Now the way they tighten it up is they hit everybody across the economy. So this is a government-induced recession at the end of the day, and it's going to be global. So it's not like we're saying, okay, this is uh, Canada only uh, or USA only. It is going to be uh, global in its reach simply because inflation has just gotten out of control. And as you know, we're a global uh, global economy. Uh, productions happen in different parts of the world. Things are shipped over and cost has escalated. As you can see with fuel prices, uh, it's gone up dramatically. Uh, now we're seeing some softening in the gasoline price, but yet you're seeing diesel continue to uh, increase in price. Why is that significant? Because everything you move pretty much is done with diesel, right? So it means that your groceries are going to be impacted. It means material to your uh, to your hardware stores are going to be impacted. It means you know transportation to um, to construction sites and all the construction equipment. They're pretty much on diesel. So just to frame this in, this is kind of like where we are. So how do you navigate as an investor in a recession? What can you do to make sure that you are properly planned and that you're doing the right things to survive this if we in fact go into that extreme? 
The one good thing is a lot of the experts that we chat with, they are talking about the fact that they expect the slowdown to be over maybe a 12 month period, but nobody has the crystal ball. But with the with the slowdown and you're seeing the impact right now, especially in the in the real estate side, because Things have slowed down. Sales have slowed down dramatically. Uh, mortgage brokers, their business have slowed down dramatically. You're going to see people shifting from their current jobs into other jobs because, again, they need that income, especially the new people who's coming into the industry. Prices on properties are going to move down significantly, especially in markets where it was overinflated and sort of growing quite dramatically. So you need to plan yourself properly. Now is actually, and I and I want to frame this in, now is actually not the time to sell unless you're in a situation where you need access to that capital, right? So let's look at it this way. If you're an investor, and we're all investors here, one is you got to make sure that you have contingency funds available, whether it's a line of credit, credit card, uh, money reserve in the bank, or access to some level of capital, because you got to plan for a few things. If you're the landlord and you have tenants coming in, obviously, if they get impacted, you're going to have to carry the rents uh, for a period of time until they can get back to paying you. You may have to give a little concession with them. You may have to work with them if their jobs are affected, which can be a real probability at this point in time. As you can appreciate in a recession, things get slow and you're going to see the announcements with uh, job cuts. It's, it's gonna happen. So you as the, the landlord, I mean, property investment is a great way to leverage and to sort of ride out a recession. But at the end of the day, you gotta make sure you have carrying power. So making sure that you do that allows you to take control of some of the tough months where you fund it until you get the recovery back. Because once you get to the end of the recession and the government boosts back up the economy to generate economic activity, obviously that's going to uh, increase. The other thing that you got to look at is as we go into the future, the immigration plan has been quite clear with the government. They are looking to make about, bring in about 500,000 pe people a year. Um, that's quite significant. It means that there's going to be demand for housing, demand for rental. So you can gauge the fact that you're going to have a high demand market, which is going to allow you to figure out how do you continue to provide housing so that your business can be successful. And so this is why you now is the time to basically not panic. And the one thing in a recession that a lot of people talk about is while you're going to see slowdowns in the economy, you're also going to see new opportunities come out, right? Um, as an investor, as you can appreciate, now is your time to buy in premium markets. Why? Because there are motivated sellers in these markets that want to move on. They want to get rid of the properties. They want that cash coming in the bank. Now, whether it's right or wrong, that's not for us to debate. The fact is they are ready to put it out there. They are motivated. You can put in offers with conditions. You can put in offers that are low ball based on what your analytics show that the property might be worth for you to be able to assume it. So this is a, a changed market for sure. And this is where your opportunities are going to come alive, right? Um, and, and I want you to understand that very carefully because we don't want you buying, or rather I should say, I don't want you buying to the point where you're over-indexed. At the same time, I don't want you missing out on opportunities, right? Um, now is the time really when you run your numbers carefully. Make sure, you know, make sure that you're enjoying what you're seeing. The numbers make sense. Is there cash flow? Can the property carry itself? What if we went up two more points over the next year? Because again, the government's target in Canada is a 2 to 3% inflation rate. We've come down to 6 So what does that mean? They're going to increase rates again until they get that inflation where they want it to be. Challenge is supply chain is still affected. So it's not necessarily just based on uh, demand. It's also lack of supply. So it's going to be an interesting market for sure. 
um, watch the government news, understand what's happening, because you want to make sure that you're balancing the budgets, that you are making sure that you're well planned and well prepared, and that you're vetting your tenants to make sure that they are in a good industry that has some level of security or that they have some kind of a planning or understanding so that you can ride the wave. Now, the opportunities are coming. You can negotiate down prices, like I say, based on what the market is doing today. Lack of sales simply means that there will be a motivated seller who wants to get cashed out. Property values have gone up so high in such a short space of time in the last two years that even though it's dropped, there is still profitability for a lot of the people that owned the properties many years before. If you're new to the market as of early this year to now, yeah, you're going to feel some pain. But again, you will realize those losses if you sell. If you hold on to your properties, rents are going up. That'll help, help offset some of the mortgage payments and other commitments that you have. So you can actually hold on to these properties because as you can know, over time, real estate continues to grow. It's up and down, up and down with little bumps. Somebody once said it's like an it's like a yo-yo going up an escalator, right? And I think that frames it in really well. So you need to have staying power. What is staying power? The ability to hold on to your properties so that you can get back to when the economy uh, is generating uh, jobs and, and the government is pushing the agenda again for economic development. It's a timing issue. Trouble is we don't know how long the timing is going to work. It's everybody's expert best guess at this point in time. So what do you do? Make sure that contingencies are there. Make sure you have access to capital. Make sure that you have a plan to ride out the existing properties so that you're good to go. Let's talk about acquisitions. So now is your buying time. Now is the time if you have money, you have mortgage approvals with the banks, um, you can go after properties because it would make sense. And again, number crunching is really important. Doing your due diligence is really important because you want to make sure that your property is in a position where it's you're not dipping into your pocket necessarily, but the property can take care of itself because you will get that bump in the rent demand. So targeting properties are one thing. The other thing is, as you know, multifamily, they operate on your debt service ratios and the cap rates. So once those numbers make sense, then you're fine. You can continue to, to negotiate. You can continue to add into your, into your portfolio because again, these numbers are going to make a dramatic difference for how you manage a business. And these are businesses. If you're doing a sort of like a buying pool, uh, you're, you're pooling with other investors, you guys are coming together, uh, to target certain properties, absolutely the best time because the money in the bank, and we'll talk about that, but really and truly the pooling allows you to get into properties, especially nice, beautiful, well-performing properties in AAA location markets that you can, before that was very difficult to get in because there's literally no cash flow. Uh, lots of, as you know, a lot of big dollars go after these opportunities in the in the pr premium premium markets so now is the opportunities for you to look at it and see if you can actually come together as a group and make a plan to buy that so that's very interesting way to, to do it for sure and again keep looking for the opportunities because we have an influx of people coming into the country they're going to need nice decent homes right and one of the the best value creation is really build beautiful homes or renovate beautiful homes so that you get premium uh, clientele and you can charge your premium price as well to help offload or offset some of that uh, money that you're going to be paying out to in mortgages and upkeep. So from an investor's perspective, this is the way to go. You also have people who are doing land development, who are constructing condominium buildings. Where are they sitting in the world? Well, the, the thing with these guys is their projections are usually three to five, six years out. How long is this recession going to potentially uh, last? Again, we don't know, but let's make some assumptions here. If they're projecting out three to five or six years, then they have, they're going to plan for some cushion 
in between the recessionary period so that they can continue to build, continue to deliver on, on plan. And then by the time the economy recovers and the hope is that by then we should be back into a, into a positive economy, then this is where they would leverage profitability so their investors can get repaid with profits. They can provide proper homes for people. Uh, people can buy, they can move on, and then the economy continues to grow. So it doesn't mean you don't invest. It means that you need to just run your numbers again because there are certain assumptions that you're going to be having to make. And then you've got to vet those assumptions with what you're seeing happening in the market. So these are really important, um, valuable information that you got to, to do. And if you have if you have somebody you're working with, a consultant, a coach, a mortgage broker, somebody, uh, the real estate uh, brokers, they can all help you to sort of figure out what are the numbers saying to you so that you can make an informed decision. Because again, depending on where they are in the journey, if you're getting discounted pricing, now is your opportunity to buy, hold, and then you'll profit in the future. And the real estate, as you know, it's a slow game to wealth. It's not a quick game. That's why we talk about generational wealth. That's why we talk about 10, 15, 20 years. In the future, your property would go significantly higher than what you paid for it. And again, remember, there's four to five ways to win with real estate investing. So this is some of the metrics that, that we personally like uh, that can really help you weather the recession because while the properties are rented, that tenant is helping you manage through the uh, recession with your properties, you know. The next thing is I want to talk about leveraging or over leveraging as an investor. If you're using uh, your buying pool and you're, you're getting your friends and your family and stuff to, to jump in on the investments with you, obviously you want to make sure that the amount of assets that you have under your holdings, that it is enough to be able to take care of the amount of money you're borrowing. Why is that important? In the event that things dramatically change and you need to tap into, into the asset base that you have in order to repay investors or repay loans or anything like that, you don't want to be in a position where you're owing $10 million and you only have $8 million in assets. That's a $2 million shortfall. It has to come from somewhere. So therefore, it's better that you have 10 million debt load, you have maybe 11, 12 million dollars in assets. Because then if ever there is a need to liquidate, there's a need to get rid of these things in order to, to get access to money or even a portion of it, it allows you to basically sleep at night knowing that the, the money or the investors' funds are also protected uh, with, an, with enough assets so that you're never really getting into the, the situation of, oh my goodness, it's, it's more debt, less asset. We want it the other way. We want more asset, less debt. So please remember when you're looking at your anal analytics, plan for that and also plan to the fact that the property that you purchase is not worth what it was six months ago, right? So you got to take that into consideration. And when you do, definitely the numbers would make sense. And then you'll be managing an efficient business. So these are some of the things that definitely, you know, you want to aspire to. Why? Because now is also your best buying time. And I want to talk about money in the bank. So a lot of people, especially consumer driven people, consumer mindset people, they're going to say, I want safety and security. I'm going to keep my money in the bank. Well, every day that you keep money in the bank, you're actually losing in a significant guaranteed way. The value of your dollars is just dropping and dropping and dropping every day because the ability to buy is being eroded by inflation. So how do you manage this? You follow the model of businesses. What do businesses do? They put their money into CapEx. They put their money into in, into their business to generate revenue. How do they generate the revenue? They look at their cost, they look at the sales price that they need, and they raise the sales price in order to manage effectively and be profitable. You are now a business person in real estate, and that's why I always say you're an entrepreneur the day you decide to be an investor. And what it is you're going to do is you got to look 
at your business opportunity. Park your money into a property that's going to grow in value over time. It's going to give you some cash flow. Rents are going to be pushed up simply because of demand and the cost of, of mortgages are going up. Property tax are going up. Utilities are going up. Renovation, labor, material is still up. So it means that you need to charge a premium to be profitable. And that's what you want. And the rents are being pushed up. Now, in a controlled state, obviously, you can, when tenants turn over, then you go to market. But in between that, obviously, you respect the rules. And if you're doing updates, you know, you can definitely raise rents accordingly to what the guidelines allow. Uh, next, 2023, it's 2.5% uh, in Ontario, which is, which is for rent increases, which is huge because typically it was way lower than that. So we're seeing the shift. We're seeing that as a business, you put your money into an income producing asset. Now you're in a position to weather re the recession. Your value of your dollar is actually going to grow. So as recession erodes value, your money goes up. So this is a good time when you want to just make sure that you're vetting your, your people. Now, if you're not into buying the properties, maybe you want to work with a buying group and get your money working for you with, with collective people. I mean, that's quite a good way to sort of get that money working so that you can continue to weather the inflation and instead of your value of your money or the purchasing power going down, you can get it to go up. So it's, it's really important that we understand that level of it. So, I mean, these are some of the, the rationale in order to weather recession. The other thing that you're going to do is you're going to be looking for opportunities to get yourself further invested. Now is your best time to educate yourself, to find the right um, programs or strategies or get, into, get in front of people that you can do training and development. Because again, with training and development, you will have new opportunities, new insight, and new ways to generate, re re uh, generate income. Because what you want to do is you want to have multiple sources of income, especially during a recession. When you do that, it limits the, the impact on you and you're generating more money coming your way. And it doesn't always mean trading time for money because you can trade uh, properties, you can get business working, you can have money working for you while you sleep. But you need to learn where these opportunities are, find out what's aligned to you in terms of whether it's real estate investing, uh, trading, uh, contracting, consulting. There's so much opportunities out there, right? Now, as you know, our focus is really real estate and mindset. That's pretty much where we are. We allow people to invest with us. We also work together with people and we also provide training and development. And the reason why is because we want as a community for people to grow. And this is what it's about. So again, recession, you know, it's coming. We talk to all the gurus. They're all talking about the potential recession coming. But there is a plan to make sure that you can weather the recession. There is a plan to make sure you thrive in it. There is a plan to further educate yourself in it so that you become successful. And this is the framework that I want you to really think about and to understand significantly because you know, many, many people have actually had the opportunities where they've added significant value in their holdings simply because the markets are going to recover. But while it is down, the savvy investor, the guys who's lined up the money, lined up the pre-approvals, lined up their friends and family to go after certain deals, they are the ones who are going to make the money. In 2010, 11, 12, uh, the U.S. was a perfect example of that, where, where the market was literally crashed, no activity, foreclosures, like nobody's business. And today, everybody's running back into the U.S. in order to invest. Why? Because the market recovered from then to now. It does take time, but those who purchase properties back in 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, they have more than quadrupled their investments. You were picking up properties 
I remember when we looked at it, we were properties like thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars um in Florida. Like it was crazy. Uh seven, eight thousand dollars in Buffalo. Um LA, same sort of scenario. There were so many markets where they just dropped the ball, everything went below value. And those who picked up, uh, you know, in this today's market, they they are definitely um looking back and saying, you know what, money well spent because the market recovered. And as a result, your 50,000 property became 350,000, multiply that by 10 properties, multiply that by 15 properties. So it does really, be, it is worth it to plan for a recession uh, on several fronts. Make sure that you have contingency planning, make sure you have pre-approvals, make sure you have your funding lined up with fellow investors, and target the right properties in the right locations. Because again, once the market recovers, it's going to be brilliant. But until then, navigate carefully and don't be afraid. When I say don't be afraid, like look at the numbers. Talk to people in your in your team, in your network, your brokers, your, your agents, because they're going to find you the right opportunities where you can, you know, generate profit. You can secure uh your future and your children's future by putting your money to work in a time when it's low pricing, because you're, when it's time for you to sell in a high market, you're gonna get that differential that we're chasing. So, you know, this is sort of like my top line thoughts on planning for a recession, because I've had many questions and many conversations around it. So I thought I'd share this with you guys uh, today, just to give you a framework for recession planning happy to have a in-depth conversation where we can actually look at the definition of a recession what are some of the impacted people how do economies really survive what businesses could potentially be at risk and things like that we can always get into that but from an investor's perspective i just thought i'd share that with you today because it's really an important part of our planning for 2023 and you know stay close to people that are sort of like um, in the know in terms of they're close to, to the uh, finance side with the banks, they're close to maybe the finance side on government side as well, and they have inside information because it's an information game at the end of the day to really understand what's happening. But remember the underlying goal by the government is they want to drop inflation back to like two and 3%. Is that possible? Uh, nobody has the right answer. But the logic is they keep increasing interest rates until inflation comes down. So what that means is they're going to slow the economy down. So now is your time. As things get slowed, you got to plan for it. You got to make sure that you set contingencies in place. And if you look at your portfolio and your portfolio is too tight, then you can make some adjustments so that you can have access to some level of capital. And then you'd be able to sort of manage through it all until it recovers as well. So once again, folks, you know, this is the Pineapple uh, Podcast. And remember to hit the like and subscribe button and hit the notification bell because we do want to grow this base. I love sharing with you guys. Put in your comments any questions and opinions you have on how do we manage and how do we navigate uh, the recession. Until then, have a great day. And remember, it's all about being tough on the outside and sweet on the inside and wearing your crown of gratitude proudly. Bye, everybody.